Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So for the longest time, CAD used to be the bastion of large companies and well-off individuals. A single license of the most popular CAD programs ranged from $10,000 to $25,000 per seat. And then you had to pay maintenance fees every year to keep the software up to date. Usually the maintenance fees were around 20%, so annually that would be between two and $5,000 per year per license. Now, if you wanted to add CAM to your CAD program, well then that would be another ten dollars to $20,000, plus more maintenance. The costs were, and in some cases, still are utterly ridiculous. Then suddenly the internet happened, and a group of altruistic folks started making software freely available. So-called shareware or freeware emerged on the internet. The entire movement was codified in what we now call open source, and truly free software emerged from the shadows to take over daily life. The term open source is credited to Christine Peterson and was quickly embraced by the likes of Linus Torvalds and Richard Stallman, otherwise known as the father of open source. Open source was great and its contribution to the modern world are incalculable. However, in my opinion, what really changed the economics of software delivery was the App Store by Apple. The original App Store was filled with fully functional applications that were readily available at a modest cost. Let me repeat that again, a modest cost. In some cases, the cost of an app was 10 or 100 times less than their full-fledged desktop equivalents. Now, in most cases, the apps lacked feature parity with their desktop siblings, but still provided a targeted and focused value for significantly less money. Initially, the App Store was not filled with offerings from major brands and big name software developers. Instead, it was comprised mainly of indie brands or independent software developers offering small, focused tools for a reasonable price. It didn't take long for the major brands to notice the popularity and the exclusivity of the App Store. Thus started the struggle to bring large, bloated application focused on keyboards and mouses to a small screen using swipe, pinch, and twist as the primary interaction mechanisms. Many companies struggled with this. Adapting to an entirely new way of interacting with a computer was hard. But more importantly, bringing a feature-rich application to consumers at the fraction of a cost of traditional software was a problem. It was really an existential crisis for many companies, especially the ones that had brand lock, or more importantly, OS lock. I'm looking at you, Microsoft. Along the way, the consumers won. We got top tier solutions at commodity prices. In some cases, solutions that were never available to consumers before were now not only available, but they were affordable. It was truly a revolution in the computer industry and a boon for consumers. So what's my point? Well, when I first started in CAD and CAM, there were literally no free solutions for me. Nearly all the CAD and CAM software packages cost some amount of money, and 99% of them were only available on Windows or Linux. Now, I've been using a Mac for over 30 years, and my choices were, well, limited at best. Additionally, after paying a lot of money for my machine, I was hit with the stark reality that I couldn't really use the machine without more purchases. The software, the bits, the materials, on and on and on. I hadn't calculated any of that into my budget, and I was literally floored by how much more money I needed to spend just to make the machine useful. So now is probably a good time to pause and just note that I've done an entire video on the hidden costs of CNC, which I will link to above and down below if you are interested in that. The added costs are staggering and can easily dwarf the cost of your machine by two to three times. So keep that in mind when you're considering purchasing a machine and which machine that you are going to purchase. I did end up purchasing a CAM solution that ran only on Windows and I used various software packages to make it run on my Mac. It was not optimal and I'm still a little chafed about being forced to spend money and being forced to use Windows to boot. Fast forward a few years and suddenly usable, feature-rich, and free CAD and CAM software started emerging on the market. It was glorious. Finally, the barrier to entry to hobbyist level CNC's had been lowered to the point where people could get into the hobby, become productive, 
grow their skills, and then eventually upgrade to paid software when their skills and their needs demanded it, but not before. These free CAD and CAM packages were not as feature rich as the established brands, but they got the job done for their audience and their niche. This forced some major CAD and CAM vendors to rethink their strategy and start offering some of their products to consumers at significantly reduced rates, if not entirely free. In some cases, it was a time-limited trial or a feature-limited baitware, but regardless, the software is now available for the first time to consumers. I truly believe that without this change in software delivery, the vibrant communities of makers that we have today would not exist. That is true for electronics, printed circuit boards, 3D modeling, and CNC. After many years of free software being available, many companies started wondering how they could monetize their efforts. Now look, developing software is not free. It takes a lot of resources to do it properly, and it takes even more resources to build a large audience. That is why you see so many open source applications abandoned in GitHub. The internet is littered with the carcasses of good ideas that lacked proper resources or commitment to get the job done. Something had to give. I suppose it's a matter of debate which came first, paywalls or subscriptions, but regardless, both have arrived and here we are. Companies eager to prop up their floundering revenue started offering free trial periods, followed by a low monthly subscription rate and easy automatic renewals. To incentivize their customers, they started moving key capabilities behind that paywall. Now, I don't have any issues with companies making money. I have no issues with company having both free and paid models. Where I draw the line, however, is when companies move free features behind a paywall. That is a digital bait and switch. It is a con game and it is a ruse. Now, in all fairness, it is only a bait and switch if that was the intention of the company from the outset. In many cases, I don't think that was the case. I think many companies saw people flocking to their free products, saw costs skyrocketing, and needed a way to cover those costs. To cover those costs, they took the most popular or most used features and put them behind that paywall. Anyone who wanted or needed those features had to pay. It really is that simple. Companies banked on people wanting their features and their willingness to pay for them. And many people did. So I said I don't have any issues with companies making money. So what is my issue here? Well, simply put, it's the dishonesty. The companies reneged on the promise they made to their customers. They provided a service to the customers at no cost and then removed that service. They entered into a tacit contract with their users and then abandoned them. That is anti-consumer, that is anti-user, and it is anti-community. The same people that brought you the popularity and the reverence of your products are now being exploited for financial gain, and I think that sucks. It's a terrible business practice and it is no way to treat your loyal customers, period. Let's break this behavior down a little bit. I'm gonna call out a couple specific examples. Now, I have nothing against these specific companies, but I do have a beef with their business practices. The first company that comes to mind for me is Autodesk. They baited their customers with exceptionally valuable and feature-rich capabilities in Fusion 360 for many years. Then one day, they announced some of those features would be subscription only. Now, I think the internet went a little bit overboard with the implications of the initial changes. They were not nearly as catastrophic as the internet would have you believe. They were, however, features that I used regularly, and that sucked for me as well as for many other people. After significant backlash by the internet and their customers, Autodesk did ultimately roll back some of the changes, but many were left in place still to this day. So what makes Autodesk's behavior so insidious is that they have a track record of bad business practices. So bad, in fact, many people refused to purchase their software entirely. So it was no surprise to many what Autodesk did to Fusion 360. Now Fusion is still free and it is still a great application. It's just uh, stilted in a couple areas. If you rely on those features, well, you need to pay or find a new application. As a note, Fusion 360 is 10 times less expensive than other Autodesk solutions, and it has feature parity with most of them. So it is still a bargain, even though it is a subscription. And I really hope that it stays that way. 
The second company that I want to highlight here is Carbide 3D. They have provided a free version of Carbide Create for a long time, and it contained many desirable features. Now, if I recall properly, they have also had a pro version the entire time. However, recently, they decided to remove the export G-code capability from the free version and move it to the pro version. The ability to export G-code for use with any machine is so fundamental and so basic that any CAM software without that feature is essentially useless. Carbide does offer Carbide Motion to send G-code to your machine, but it only works with their machines, like the Shape Oco. I'm personally immensely disappointed in Carbide 3D. They were leaders in the hobbyist CNC market, offering a series of compelling solutions to any user. Ignoring the fact that they took the Shape Oco brand and they made it proprietary, and they, they still continue to be true to the hobbyist market, and they provide high-value machines at reasonable costs. Quite frankly, I expect more from them. In my opinion, they let the entire community down with this boneheaded decision. Now, before you light up the comments, I understand why they made the decision. I am sure Carbide Crate is a loss leader for them, and in some regard, pushing people towards the pay version, theoretically, they can invest more money in the application and bring more features online faster. The problem is we don't live in a theoretical world. We live in the real world with real demands and real bills. This decision just added another bill to some people, increasing their monthly spend and decreasing the amount of money they have to spend on other things. Say like groceries or rent or mortgage. So now I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. How much longer will Inventables allow Easel to be free? Will they eliminate the free version entirely? Will they move all the really important features behind a paywall? Well, you can bet that they're having those discussions right now. So to Zach and the rest of the Inventables team members, I implore you, don't take the bait. Continue to support the community. Continue to encourage and foster the beginner CNC market by providing the best free CAD and CAM software possible. Eventually, your users will no longer be beginners. They will need what you have to offer in the paid version. They will graduate from a beginner to a revenue-generating member of society. They will. It just takes time. Give the community time to grow with you. So this is my question to all of you. Do you think we are at an inflection point for free software? Are we at the point where free software will be nothing more than a front for paid upgrades? I'm interested in your opinion. Leave your comments down below. If you're interested in a head-to-head -head comparison of Easel and Carbide Create, check out this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.